I always wanted to be an artist. I always wanted to be an artist since I was five. I never really thought it was possible. You know, even though I was always interested in it and sort of sought it out, I never thought I could participate in it. You know, finally realizing that maybe this was a possibility was a really big deal for me and really exciting. And sort of once I found that, I just went full throttle. Yeah, it's interesting about this place is the range of form. I think that most people would never sort of associate this with art making or, you know, the aesthetic in which I render in the end, but this is where it all sort of starts. From a young age, I was always sort of fascinated with um, storefronts and display and how objects were sort of repeated. When I'm trying to set these pieces up, I really want some sort of visual unity that travels between the pieces. Sort of, even though that they're separate objects, I really sort of love that flow from one chamber to another. And then also, having grown up in a family that had a manufacturing company, one of my first jobs was working on the assembly line. Repetition, redundancy, a lot of machines and equipment and sort of constant movement that happened with objects coming down the line. I really want it to not sort of look like it's been made by human. There's something about it being very industrial looking, very sterile and very ambiguous in its read. The first part of my process is collecting a vocabulary of objects. Everything that I do is appropriated for the most part from something else. So I really try to go to sort of off, off the beaten path kind of places and things that I think either are sort of industrial remnants places, factories. Maybe I'm leading you around, but there's all these sort of mystery barns. Sometimes I can really think about what I'm interested in finding, but often I'm left, you know, to sort of what might be there. And that's kind of interesting too because I think it gets me thinking in new directions. I think I'm both sort of an anthropologist and an archeologist all at once. Hmm. I'm gonna come back here. <laughs> Another thing that I find interesting is just, I think a lot of artists are really caught up and inspired through nature and how that's really sort of never been as much of an interest to me as, as sort of like man's impression on nature and sort of that collide between those two realities. I think there's sort of a symbiotic connection between what I'm interested in the work speaking about to my process itself. I sort of have that industrial kind of base philosophy in my practice. My studio is like my little sanctuary where I kind of go into this other reality and, and really try to sort of make sense of the puzzles that I create. And my whole process is through slip casting, which is again something that within the ceramic culture is the way industry manufactures ceramics. So there's again sort of a correlation to my process and what I'm pulling from. China has a huge history within the manufacturing of ceramics. Um, and uh, so much is rooted there in terms of the process and techniques and aesthetics. And so it was really interesting for me to go and research different contemporary manufacturing companies that uh, manufacture ceramics. And I, I just, I love that sort of visual chaos of organized repetition and then also just amalgamated kind of piles. One of the hardest things that I have within my own process is balancing the visual with the idea having that balance so that there's something that's more cerebral and then something that also satisfies my interest in aesthetics. <laughs>